Ancient Egypt is not only one of the most popular civilizations in Africa, but it's among the most recognized in the world. Egypt's great antiquity is an unassailable reality. However, one may be surprised to learn that despite its antiquity, there existed an even older state. Another African state that may have been more powerful. If this is indeed the case, how did Egypt come to dominate the historical narrative in regards to Nile Valley civilization? What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and contributing to this content. The link to Patreon is in the description box below. Also, stay tuned with a word from my sponsors. Hello, my name is Howard Dorsey. I'm 54 years old. I'm here to talk about my uh, experience with herbal results. Um, I was getting sick, so I, I went to the doctor and they told me that um, my blood pressure was high, my cholesterol was borderline or high, so I was very sick. You know, I thought I was, sometimes I thought I was dying at, at some point. And uh, I ordered a bottle of olive leaf extract. This is, this is how the bottle comes in. And within the first probably week and a half, two weeks, I checked my blood pressure and it was back down to normal. It was like 120 over 80. My cholesterol went down to uh, 125. You know, I definitely believe that olive leaf extract from Herbal Results saved my life. And I, that's real. I mean, I, 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 and I recommend it to everyone in my family, my friends, and we've seen a lot of results in that, in that manner as well. Purchase now at HerbalResults.net. To begin, though this video was founded on historical facts, it is still theory based because the purpose is to answer a gap in our historical knowledge. The answer given in this video cannot be understood as the only valid or legitimate explanation. It's simply an inference to what I consider the best explanation. That being said, be open to other sources of information that may countervail the conclusion presented in this video today. Very few people would disagree with the idea that Egypt and Nubia possessed the first significant states in all of Africa. Reflexively, we have to ask ourselves, why did the Nile Valley have these early states before any other region of Africa? Scholar Christopher Eric proposes that early states arose in Egypt and Nubia before anywhere else simply because of population density. The fertility of the Nile attracted many groups of early Africans and once a critical mass began to form, so too did the idea of statehood. Egypt is the golden child of Africa, subjectively speaking. It's the most well-known and well-respected civilization in human history. Unfortunately, because of the fame, we assume its supreme antiquity and its early salience in Nile Valley history. However, if we consider proper historical perspectives, it was actually the reverse. The region of northern Nubia not only predated Egyptian statehood, but was ostensibly more powerful. The literature tells us that this Nubian state was known as Tasseti. For a while, between 3400 and 3200 BCE, the most powerful of the small states may have been Tasseti, actually located in the northern Nubia stretches of the Nile, just south of Egypt. The pictorial documents left by its kings reveal Tasseti's claim to having conquered and ruled over Upper Egypt for a time. Imported items from as far north as the Syria-Palestine region turn up in the grave goods of the rulers. At the same time, Tasseti appears to have formed the northern outlier of the Middle Nile Basin culture area of Sudanic civilization. Not only did Tasseti seem to have dominion in northern Nubia and southern Egypt, but this general Sudanic culture was quite influential as a whole on Egyptian civilization. According to scholar Christopher Eret, the Nubians introduced into Egypt the concept of kingship itself. The sacral chiefs of the Middle Nile Basin cultural area became the divine kings of Egypt who as late as the start of the third dynasty still required actual human beings to be sent along with them into the afterlife. 
Ironically, popular dialogue often speaks on Egyptian influence and dominion in Nubia, but seldom do we reverse the sails, revealing the full scope of Nile Valley history. The obvious question remains, and that leads us to the purpose of this video. Why was the powerful and influential Nubian state or states eventually overshadowed by a later Egyptian one? Why did Egypt come to be considered the civilizing gem of the Nile and not Nubia? On paper, we can answer this in a simple way. Tassetti's power began to wane and Egypt's population density began to increase. The balance of power had shifted to the rulers of Upper Egypt with its much more extensive areas suitable for farming and much greater concentrations of population. It is tempting to see the first moves toward Egyptian unification in the south as, at least in part, a response to earlier attacks from Tassetti, but other factors must have been involved as well. I agree with Christopher Eret's analysis here. There must have been multiple factors that contributed to Tassetti's decline and Upper Egypt's rise. We have a gap of information, and I'll try to fill some of the void by adding to his explanation. In his book called Sapiens, Yuval Harari speaks about a concept he calls the imaginative order. He tells us that early humans were initially in small groups, but in order to cooperate in larger groups, they had to invent what's known as an imaginative order. It's similar to what some scholars call the myth of state, where humans create mythology, religious ideas, and other forms of social or divine authoritative concepts. Now, this idea is critical, so put a pin in it, as we'll circle back to it later. I've identified two reasons why Upper Egypt became the principal civilization along the Nile. The first reason is the diversity dilemma, and the second is imaginative order. To put it plainly, the two primary reasons why Upper Egypt began to have dominion was because they had less cultural and linguistic diversity than Nubia, and they were able to create a more convincing imaginative order. Comments on Nubian diversity have existed since ancient times. Writers from Greece and Rome noted the diversity amongst Nubian peoples. In the literature, they are known as Ethiopians. Scholar Laszlo Torek also points to the observable anthropological evidence concerning Nubian diversity. It's not hard to imagine that over time, it became increasingly difficult for Tassetti to assert or maintain dominance in Nubia because of Nubian diversity. It would have taken greater effort and more resources to sustain multiple linguistic or cultural communities under one political or religious authority, aka imaginative order. One Egyptian scholar speaks on the independent community dynamic in Nubia. I think his point serves as a proxy to the Nubian diversity dilemma. In Nubia, we have a population that at the dawn of history possessed a material culture equal, if not superior, to that of Upper Egypt. But the population was divided into smaller groups, spaced farther apart. Those groups were more independent and more mobile because stock raising required frequent moves and played at least as important a part in the economy as did agriculture, which was very limited in a valley narrower than in Egypt. Now this is not to say that Upper Egypt did not have diversity, but perhaps due to superior farming conditions aka sources of food, Upper Egypt had more resources even if it was just as diverse. Because of what they offered, for stalling any potential state of privation, they were able to produce a more convincing imaginative order, outperforming the Nubian imaginative order. In other words, less strenuous toil for food means greater population influx, security, and the perception of social, religious, and political legitimacy. The increased population in Upper Egypt was better suited to create a convincing imaginative order which in turn established cooperative unison, ultimately moving in the direction of unification. Moreover, the Egyptian writing form was a manifestation of the imaginative order, further binding the people together, increasing the likelihood of one identity and goal. It's interesting that much later in history, after Nubia became independent from Egyptian control, 
they had more tools to address the independent community or diversity dilemma and the imaginative order. After the arrival of the Kushites, we see in part a resolution to these issues. The Kushites arose as the most dominant Nubian group, gaining dominion over the others and unifying Nubia under one state. I find it interesting that the Kushite elite borrowed heavily from the imaginative order and the writing of the Egyptians. I suspect they did this because of its reputation and its ability to establish cooperation along the Nile. This imaginative order borrowed from the Nubians is what the historical literature refers to as the myth of state. Scholar Laszlo Torek gives a great distillation of this concept. In Kush, however, New Kingdom titularies were taken as models more frequently than in Egypt, which again seems to point towards the impact of the tradition of the imperial myth of state created under the 25th dynasty. The 25th dynasty titularies were formulated with the clear intention to present concentrated manifestations of the legitimacy of their owners, both in Kush and in Egypt, as well as to give a generally comprehensible expression to their principal political aims. According to scholar Laszlo Torek, it seems as though the Kushites took the imaginative order or myth of state from Egypt in order to buttress its legitimacy as rulers of the two lands. This was apparently the most effective model in the Nile Valley to ensure unity and cooperation amongst such diverse groups of people. Perhaps a lesson learned from the earlier states of Upper Egypt. To suggest that the Upper Egyptian imaginative order was only perceived as legitimate due to a geographic advantage, aka better farming conditions, is really irrelevant here. This is just how history works sometimes. Now, it's unwise to propose that this was the only reason Kushites borrowed from the Egyptian imaginative order, but I believe this theory is useful as an explanation. All in all, I suspect that Nubian states did not arrive on the African scene as the principal African civilization because of its diverse communities and its less compelling imaginative order, in part due to geographic constraints. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace.